welcome to our class today that's remind me to remind you and my names from madam Ra, from kids technical college business department i'm a trainer okay today i would like us to look at the reports reports so i would like us to look at the first the donation then look how it's supposed to be and also the kinds of the reports and how they are supposed to be written so a report a report is any any written or oral communication providing an account of work carried out or investigation so a report a report should give out an account of the work carried out or the work which has been investigated together with the conclusions arrived at as a result of an investigation. This investigation must have a result. Must have a result which you arrived at. That result is the conclusion. Conclusion arrived at from the investigation. So, if you are given, uh, you are supposed to write a report whereby you must investigate before you write, you must come up with a conclusion which you arrived from your investigation. We are going to, uh, to look at the parts of a report. So, in that report, the report can be of a meeting or an interview. Also, a report can be of a meeting or interview. So, after the interview, you must write a report what happened and what you have decided to be done. If it's a meeting, you must write a report of what, how the business was transacted. Okay? and the conclusions from the meeting. Okay, the essential facts, essential facts, meaning the essential information, the essential information should be presented, should be presented in a logical order, and it should be written in using past tense. A report is written in past tense. We don't use the present tense or the future tense, we use past tense because it, it is uh, something which has already happened. So you are recording it down to report it or to give an account of it. So you use past tense. So let us look at the major kinds of reports. We have two major kinds of reports. We have informal reports and we have formal reports. So the formal reports, formal reports are written by individual Formal, informal. Then I start with the informal. Informal reports are written by individuals inside the business on special occasions. Informal reports are written by individuals. Written by individuals. inside inside the business on special occasions so for instance such a report can be from the secretary to her employer and it should be written in the in the first person should be written in the first passion. So, to be written in the first person. Let's look at the four more reports.
these are the the reports which are, are made by committees to their parent bodies. So they are made by the committee members to their to their parent bodies. So such a report arises from a meeting or an event and it should be written in a that party. Because they are arising from a meeting or any event, it should be written in part written in the that party. When you say that person, you mean you are reporting what has been done by another person. Okay. So let us look at the. We have also the statutory reports. Now, under, under the formal reports, we have statutory reports. And we have the routine reports. Now the statutory report is that report which is required by law. The statutory report is a report which is required by law and it, mostly it is written in the company's heart. And also the routine report relates to a set of data at regular intervals. A set of data at regular intervals. Let us look at the layout of our report. So the way the report is written and presented will help to say the idea it contains. The way in which a report is written and presented will help to say the idea it contains. So the following rules and guidelines relate to conventional structure of a report. So when we say layout, we mean the structure of the report. So there are some, some firms which lay out their own structures, but in most cases, a report has to follow the following structure. We have the title. We have the title page. Now, the title page normally carries the title. It carries the title, subtitle. Subtitle, if any, with compulsory. Date. Address the address of the receiver, or a distribution list. So when we say a distribution list, we mean the receivers are more than one. So you must write those people whom you are reporting to. 
That's why we call them address to the address of the receiver. Then it does the summary. No, the summary gives these people the gains of the report. Without having to read it all, gives a gist. A gist is the, all the information in the summary form to the readers without having to read all the information. So this summary should be attractively written. attempt the reader to read all the documents. Now what is the introduction? Now the introduction gives the background information to the court. Introduction gives the background to the court and the source why it was necessary, why it was written, why was, was the report written. So it is, it is given in the introduction. So it usually states the objectives. states the objectives of the report, if we did the report is the, the formal, mostly formal reports. <coughs> it also shows who called for the report to be written and the scope and the treatment. Then we have the body. The body of the court. It gives all the detailed facts. So it contains detailed details, facts, facts, findings,
because of source power how they are right defining the source how they were arrived at indicates proto indicates the inferences to be drawn from them should be written precisely it should be concise and clear so that now the reader can understand very quickly then we have the conclusion So in the conclusion, here you draw, in the conclusion you draw out the main points of your report and present a considered, a considered judgment on them. you draw out the main points of your report and present a considered judgment from them. Then now we have the recommendation. These are set down to draw For a good report, the recommendations should set down clearly what has gone before when you are rewriting a report. So, for a good report, the reader is carried along by the argument so that he reaches the end. So, it should be convincing. Should be convincing enough so that the reader will continue doing what we have recommended. Then now we have the signature to be signed by all members of the committee. We have the appendices. Appendices, these are the detailed supporting, detailed supporting information.
paper which the readers may need. That is now the format of the report. So if you follow such a format, you can write a good report and make sure, as we said, if it is an informal report, it is supposed to be written in the first person. If it, uh, it is the formal report, it should be written in the third person. Then we use the past tense when writing reports. Okay. So we will be continuing. Next time we, we are going to look at the, the interviews.